So yeah, my, my journey starts with the, as many of you, with the COVID pandemic. Um, I started working in a challenge to find a quality control methodology for distributed manufacturing. And so I, I work before that from food chain security um, and like in, in a like DIY food chain security systems and how can we uh, manufacture our own tools based on existing tools that are used in the industry. And now I'm working for the Open Aware Initiative in the Internet Production Alliance. And yeah, it's been a very, very uh, collecting journey on based on, on, on understanding how uh, things are made. And I work also for a short time with Fel Ready, where I met Aziz, Mariam, and others that are here. Ah. And the understanding on, on how we develop solutions was very insightful, uh, looking at how Fuel Ready or, uh, organizer their work. And there were a few things missing there that I I was very interested in developing further. And um, so basically, um, it all came to understand that having the documentation that is not just easy to read, but easy, easy to build, uh, was like a prime, like a priority to have, like to have a, a a base for quality control. Like you need to, to keep track of every step and document these uh, different resources you are using along the process of manufacturing things to um, like track these different steps and know if everything is made accordingly to the original design or it has been modified and improved. And so I, I developed this methodology of making embedded uh, information into a sticker. That is a stickers, uh, the idea was to have them in, in machines and materials and on the designs of uh, different hardware. And by scanning these codes, gather all the information together into a single document that will have like for example, if you design a pencil holder in 3D on everything, like it will track this uh, document, like the batch of material you use, the machines you use, the time when it was manufactured and, and all the time that you spend during the process. And so this is critical for like work on devices that have to do with healthcare because um, if you don't have the right materials or the right components, you are um, more likely to not be complaining with some policies. And well, the idea was just to make it easier for people to track this thing. And so that was in 2021. And 2020, sorry, in 2021, I went to France and to the AgriLab, uh, Fab Lab. And the idea there was to develop a device that is based in this one that's in the corner. That's an existing industrial solution for uh, checking the quality of milk. Like um, in the daily productions um, that all, all over the world mostly, I will say like only a few countries have like a food chain, uh, like tracking or traceability in, all, in every step. Um, but uh, in most countries, what happens is that you have the farmers that deliver the milk to different centers. And these centers are the only ones holding the technology of knowing the, the quality of your milk. And also based on the quality of your milk, you have the price of the selling. Like, like the farmers get, get a lot of constraints because they don't have access to this technology and they can't know how to regulate their productions in a way that they uh, improve their quality of the milk. Like, um, and so I work on this hardware that um, produces a signal into 
uh, some electrodes and then checks for the pH of, of the um, milk. And based on that pH, it gives like a, like a lecture of uh, if it's uh, good or, or not and based on a numerical range. Um, but yeah, so the, my idea was to bring a solution and like reverse engineer into a make a manufacturer, like a like a fabable device. And so yeah, um, so the outcome of that research and was this device and it was during five months that I was in France. And so why, why is it important for me? And, and is that I learned how to think on, on what is the important process of developing a hardware for people that's going to use this and, and supposed to also all the scenarios where things can go wrong and all that. So, um, and so I made a list of the learnings I had um, during this process. And uh, so the first learning, big learning was like to prioritize research on the field and especially on the early stages, because at the end, you may be thinking on something, but you are in a bubble and your ideas may be not proof enough to like in the early stages to know if this is going to be useful at the end for the people that you are intended to develop this. Um, and the other learning is that not always all the ideas or all the innovation will come out as a digital tool or a, a hardware. Like makers, as makers, we have this problem, like we think like everything will be solved with a device or hardware or something. Uh, but sometimes it comes out as a methodology or even a policy, like you can contribute to develop a policy into a different direction. And talking about hardware, like uh, a good learning is like the size of the device depends on the of the components. And if you don't look further into more smaller comp uh, components and other catalogs, you will end up with a super big device and at the end it won't be useful just because you didn't run the research in there into smaller components. And, um, and the other one is uh, regarding the place where I developed this device is that maybe the innovation institutes that are too specialized into something are not the best places to start a project like this. And the reason is because sometimes there is a bureaucracy and like bringing innovation in, a, in, in, in this way is difficult because there are so many constraints like if we think about this like as a project that will be developing into uh, this process of prototyping and failing, uh, some research institutions don't understand this and think like like this way of working is not very um, efficient and because they look on things like more in the academical way. And so it's difficult to start there. And so my learning is that Maybe you should look into other type of more horizontal um, institutes so like they are not too specialized into something. And yeah, to have their mentoring, to find mentoring also very important. And that there is some knowledge that is not easy to find in in the while you are learning and developing these things. So it's important to always uh, reach out to people that has this experience uh, because there is some knowledge that is not easy to find and that takes years to develop some understanding on what are the priorities like as is right now uh, talk about and so yeah so it's always to reach out to other people to prove your ideas and and uh, develop further on that and so yeah so th that that's my journey uh, and um, I would say that most of these things that I learned, I am applying to the IOPA and different projects I'll make and all that. And I, I see that uh, a common ground for all of us is to understand that the 
better we detail our research and the documentation, the better we'll be helping others in their own journeys. So I encourage everyone to keep developing, developing your projects and looking always for your documentation to be clear and easy to follow because this will help other people uh, regardless if they are working exactly the same things uh, or not. So yeah, and that will be it.